going to get straight into the Q&A. Um, just want to say, like, again, thank you to Gary. I thought it was a real kind of poignant programme of films that took us on a bit of an emotional journey. I like to have the films that kind of bookended. First film and the last film. I just say to the guys, like, it's always really nice when you're watching someone's film and an audience really engages with it and re like reacts to it emotionally. So that's really cool that it kind of like took people on a bit of a journey. Um, so yes, without further ado, introducing on the stage, director, Carl Johnson. The writer of this story and actor, Scott Bates. Former creative and all round talent that is the Beer Zone. There'll be a few minutes at the end for like a handful of questions because of sort of timing and things that are going on. So, what I'd like to say is as we get into the questions, if you've Got your own question, start thinking about it now. You know, as when we get to the end, we'll be able to jump into it straight away. Um, so, yeah, truly multi talented group of individuals, and also like a brilliant selection of short films um, and really good stories. And as a few people have said, it's good to see Bristol on screen shot in a particular kind of way and different kinds of stories. So, here we go. I think first off, we get into kind of like the logistics, technical side of like how the film was made, and so um, yeah, I think we should start with yourself, Scott. <laughs> and the question would be is sort of where did the idea for control come from? When did you sort of begin to start writing? Yeah, uh, so I, I wrote Control back in kind of Easter time, two thousand and eighteen. Um, so at that time. Literally, well, first and foremost, I'm an actor, so I've, I've never written before. I wrote Control. I've never written, never written before. Um, and obviously, being an actor, you're kind of waiting for the phone to ring all the time. Um, you kind of do, you're doing that. Um, so I feel like it's important, you know, being a creative to kind of make your own work. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, you know what, you know, let me make my own thing, my own way. Let me write what I want to do, and then I can put myself in it at the same time. <laughs> Like I told you, I've never written like a script or anything like that before, so I'm not going to go straight to a feature. So I'm going to, I'm going to start off at like a short film, and I feel like with a short film, what I wanted to do was just make it raw, make it real, make it, you know, relatable at times as well. Um, and I feel like I wanted it to be that kind of domino effect that when you're watching it, something's happening all the time. So some, like literally, you think you, you you think you know what's happening in the story, but wait, something something else is happening there. So I'm thinking of themes now that can kind of come up with that, and I'm thinking of what about kind of control as a theme? What about controlling someone? What about, you know, how, how can I kind of develop that? And I thought, okay, let me put it into a relationship aspect. Um, and then that's where it literally came from. And then I, I, I obviously I made my first draft, made a couple drafts, kept on saying it to sending it to Corral. He's like, no, Scott, you need to do this. And, <laughs> and then we filmed it in, um, December 2018. Mm. Yeah, December 2018. So that's yeah, that's literally how it came about, man. Yeah, because it's um, it's pretty kinetic, isn't it? You know, like it packs a, a certain amount of energy. And it hits certain beats. And just as an audience member, but when I watched it, I just thought of the kind of the the energy of it. It's kind of energy captured in a bottle, in a very short time frame. A very you know, three acts condensed into a very small amount of time, which is not an easy feat, you know, by any means when it comes to filmmaking and storytelling. So with that in mind, um, Corel, as the director of this piece, could sir, like, um, be good to ask you just about like your directorial style, and kind of like, you know, like, um, script to screen kind of vibe, your team, and that kind of, you know, shot construction, just the kind of things that you kind of, took on board when you were preparing to put this together? Yeah, so like, as Scott mentioned, yeah, he sent me um, a script and he was like, what do you think of this idea and whatnot? 
It's all right, it's all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? We could get a little bit more, like, you know, get a little bit more deeper, you know, um, because I felt like the construct of it was really, really good, really relatable, and um, I felt like we needed to dig deeper to be able to kind of engage with as much of a um, different type of audience as possible, you know? Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, we went back and forth with the scripts and whatnot. And then um, when we finally decided, like, yeah, this is the one, I got, obviously then I got excited, you know what I mean? I was like, look, we got something good here. So what I did is I took advantage of where I was working at the time. Um, I work in TV, and I was working in a production company called Icon Films. And um, the good thing about that there is that like, there's so much different talented people who are, you know, in, um, inspired to be different um, roles, you know, so for example, like, I would love to, to become, like, a well-established director. So I thought, all right, cool, it makes sense. Like, if I'm directing this, I'm going to get someone who's really passionate about shooting, and then I'm going to shout someone who, who's, you know, really kind of engaged with sound, on both on set and making their own kind of com compose, of, compose of music, yeah? And then all the way down to, like, editing and grading. So luckily I had all these people around me, and as well as that, I had like broadcast equipment just, you know, at my fingertips. So I was just kind of like, you need to take advantage of what we have here and let's make something good, you know? And everybody was down. And um, even my tennis Scott is like, are you sure, are you sure? I was like, bro, like, no, nah, everybody's, everybody's on it. I'm gonna do something good and make, make something good. So in terms of like, <clears throat> you know, getting it to fruition, like, um, I hooked up with Michael Jenkins, he's not here, um, and I said, do you want to collaborate on producing it? Because obviously I managed to be able to get a team together, but I knew he, he was kind of semi-connected with being able to get access to certain places. So um, we held, um, um, what's the word, when, when you look practicing and that one, um, oh, oh. Oh. rehearsals and that. <laughs> <laughs> In the watershed, um, which was good, and then um, we also kind of like went and did some location scouting, and and yeah, we found we found a, a good place in which I felt like, look, this is we want somewhere it's gonna be small, like suffocated, like no way out. Do you know what I mean? It's rural and proper, like intense, and we found the right place. Yeah, and so. With this sort of in mind, it's I think it'd be good for the audience to get an idea of like the, the time frame of things. So from um, kind of you know, did you spend time you know rehearsing beforehand, and then that, that kind of like but you know like how long was the shoot? Mm. So like the shoot was only for one day. So oh, um, wow. yeah, we crammed it all in one day, and I would say in terms of crew, I think there was like four four of us. So one of them, one of them's up there, Patch. Yeah, shout out, shout out, Patch. Like you've been doing well, man. Like I met him the first time, and like, and he was like, yeah, like we showed him the sound and the boom equipment and whatnot. He's like, yeah, I don't, have, you know, I haven't used this before, but <laughs> well, you know, I'll get it done. <laughs> Here I did, and um, yeah, so like. It was, we started like say for example at like eight in the morning and then we needed someone like Mike there because if it was up to me we would have been there until like four in the morning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I wanted to be able to, to take as much time as, as what I felt of getting it right each scene, um, engaging with both of the actors um, as well as the DOP who, who couldn't be here as well, Jelani. Um, he's out on shoot at the moment in Laos. And um, between me and him, we did like shop this and whatnot. And um, you know, like I said, we wanted to create a vibe where you know, like we wanted to, to really show like the changes of power and control between two dominant figures in what I would like to say a, a toxic relationship. You know what I mean? And we got to get that on the screen. So yeah, it, it maybe Mike wasn't too happy, but like I, I pushed it as, as much as possible. And and when when we came into the edit, there was a few things I felt like we could have done more, but at that point you got to worry what you got. Yeah. Yeah, I mean like what strikes me is it's a real seize the time moment. 
Um, and what I like what Carell is saying is he saw his opportunity to get the right people together at the right time mm. and go in. And you mm. guys really went in on that. And, and it's the proof is on in the in the pudding, so to speak, it's on the screen. And the way in which the, we as an audience reacted to it, right, is it's there. And I think there's something really important about the energy that you brought to the table uh, as a director, writer, cast, performance, crew. Um, being able to work tightly like that as a unit. One day shoot, a tight location, you know, lighting, lens, consideration, choice of lens, mm. right? It's, that's intense. Um, which leads me to the actors, which is sort of, did you guys, obviously knowing that you might have to go in kind of guerrilla style like this and really kind of get into it, um, did you spend time, you know, getting to know each other a bit more beforehand? Did you guys know each other beforehand? And like, how much time did you take to kind of rehearse? Because Corral, there, there were a couple of rehearsals at Watershed, right? There was, there was one, but um, I knew that they rehearsed maybe once or twice before. So we rehearsed twice before, and they weren't long rehearsals, they're about three hours. Maybe? Yeah. Max? That's, that's long. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Not proper performance. So, like, when we got together, it was about. Me and Scott got together twice and just got stuck into it, really. We just went full blown with rehearsals and just went into it. And anything that we felt we recorded it a few times the first time we did it and was like, that's not right. There's no connection here. That's not working. So, we already had an idea of what we wanted to kind of get out of it. So when we were doing the rehearsals, obviously when you're doing rehearsals, things just come out of it naturally anyway. So then we had the rehearsal in London first, then we went, we had a rehearsal in Bristol, um, and then we had a rehearsal at the Watershed with a few of the guys there as well, which was good because they had, it's good to have like fresh eyes on it so you can see what's, what's going on, see so what you can So you were do. able to have the crew in with you as well? On the yeah, at that rooms. point. Not yeah. all of the crew, but we had just a yeah, yeah, yeah. So a couple of people. So it was Corral, Jelani, and Michael was there as well. Um, and it was just yeah, good to just have fresh eyes on it. And they could see the angles of where they would want to shoot, yeah. like from where how we had rehearsed. Cause we kind of rehearsed as it like it was stage, if that makes sense. Because we didn't have Absolutely. a camera there to show this is going to be from this angle, and we didn't have these guys to say we want these shots. So we sort of just went in into it, and then. When we went to the watershed, that's when we was with these guys, and they sort of just was like, okay, that's not gonna work. You need to change that to this angle. And we were like, okay, cool. So we needed that extra rehearsal to understand that certain things that we really liked weren't gonna work on camera. Yeah. So you see, that's a brilliant insight, because thinking about it, the sort of initially I was like, oh, it could be a one-act play, right? One-act theater play. So to be able to get the director and the key components of the crew and work through it together, thinking that, you know, knowing that the location scouted and knowing the kind of like, where they were going to be, to be able to do that and work that way, it just feels it's like, it makes total sense. Sibby, you know. um, again, I wanted to, to kind of um, ask you something because of, you know, like the intensity of what we're seeing on the, on the screen. Sibby, um, as, as a young black woman, young black actress, why is that like working with all these men? <laughs> um, obviously I already knew Scott and like I knew familiar faces I didn't know anyone else like in depth or like more than just a hello yeah. apart from Scott and everyone was lovely it was welcoming I'm kind of used to being the only woman um, working and not working so it wasn't sort of a thing like that to me personally but my main thing was I want to be heard just because I'm a woman, don't think you can't hear me. So, and they all respected that. And that's what I most appreciated, being on set. And not just as an actor's point, I'm a creative as well. So like, if I saw something that I felt like I could add to the table, they would welcome me with what I would say. And on other sets that I've been on, it's not always like that. You kind of get like pushed to the side just because either you're the actor or you're just the woman on set and that doesn't sit well with me <laughs> at all. I've got a big mouth and I have ideas and if you don't respect that, I don't know. <laughs> but these guys did it, they did it and they made me feel really comfortable. Any performances that I felt like I couldn't get out right there and then, they had patience and I got there in the end. So yeah, it was a pleasure.
Yeah, I think that's reflected on screen too. Because, you know, I think you're able to really kind of take us on a, on a journey with that character in a way that I think if you'd been confronted by a different director and crew, you wouldn't have been able to give us the performance you gave us. Yeah, definitely. Like, the first scene in the bathroom, mm -hmm. Corel really helped me with that, because I've never been pregnant before. <laughs> and, um, didn't really know how to react to that, because, yeah, I mean, I probably would have reacted like that, to be honest. <laughs> really intense, but at the start, like, obviously, I did my little studying on the part of how people would react or what people were going through or anyone that I knew had been pregnant and they didn't know what to do. But like doing it yourself is a whole other story. So Corel did really help me get across my emotions and like how I would feel if that was to happen to me and in the situation that I was in, in a relationship, like how it was. So yeah, it was nice to work with everyone. They made me feel comfortable. It was easy to get my, um, character in perspective, I guess, with having a comfortable crew, that definitely helps your whole performance. Like, it can change your whole performance, just being comfortable with the set and everyone around you. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, number one, that's really reassuring and quite a beautiful thing to hear, because it's not often that we hear these stories, particularly with what's been going on in the media recently, um, around kind of inclusion, diversity, and film and TV, particularly around the way that we're seeing people of colour and women being treated in the industry, I think it's the most like reassuring, hopeful, positive thing to hear. And I think it's like it's, it's also like a credit to the way you guys as artists, as director, actor and writer are not only what you're bringing to the table because as black men and human beings. It's, it's just like that's where we all need to be at, I think, personally, so it's just approaching the end of the Q and A, so it's it's kind of it's time to ask the kind of the the kind of elephant in the room question, so to speak. Because um, I, I think it's important to see films that confront and take on the complexity of relationships, bullying, and abuse in our communities for both the older and particularly younger generations. Particularly now, with everything that's going on in the world. Um, just to kind of get a gauge of like what you guys think about that and kind of like seeing an audience react to the film in the way that they did and just gauge your thoughts. Yeah, and I'm happy that it gave any form of reaction, you know. It makes mm. me feel like we've done something because, you know, um, regardless if it's a laugh, or I thought I'd show laughed, but then we can see people. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, you know, not expected to see see that, you know, and for it, we deep it in relationships, some people laugh when they get uncomfortable, you know what I mean? So um, I feel like in that respect, I feel like we've done a good job. Um, but in terms of like the message, like, <clears throat> I know I feel like it's got a place anywhere really, like, um, I feel like, you know, people or hopefully can engage in some part, form of, um, of the, uh, a relationship like that, you know difference of control whether you know people knowing what to do to, to push your partner's buttons to get what you want um, a lot of people seeking um, was it validity validity whatever <laughs> validation <laughs> yeah. but you know um, yeah so like it, it, could, it, could get, it could get real intense, you know, and like, to think of it as well, like, you know, God knows what, what people were going through like that like, during lockdown, you know what I mean? Yeah. And mm -hmm. there's people quite younger than us, younger than everybody here, like, who's, who've got themselves in a situation when you may be like 15, 16, you know, becoming a young parent, um, maybe not having a support system around you, so you feel like you're attached to that person even though you know it's wrong but in your head you might think like why like if if this person lets me go then i ain't got no one do you know what i mean and people stay you know so 
I feel like in that respect, I feel like I've got a place in many, you know, in many areas. Like, I, I'd like to see if possible, like it go in like maybe schools or something like that, or like youth centres, or you know, to to show that you know if you're if you're in a situation like this, like you don't have to and you can get out. Of it, you know? I think as well, it shows like a, a snapshot <laughs> of that relationship in that moment in time, mm. and that real life. Like at the start, you don't know where it's going. You don't know where it's going to end. I feel like sometimes in relationships, things happen like that. One day everything's, something, and then this happens, and then that happens. It's just like I say, in a domino effect. Like that text going back and forth. Um, and that's, that's life though, isn't it? That's real life. Like literally, you walk out the door, you do that, like this happens, this happens. Um, and hopefully, if people come away and they're thinking about it and it just causes conversation, because yeah. that's what you want to do if you're making film or theatre or whatever, people might say, well, what are you doing to really impact this and help yeah. make this stop the world? Make this. <laughs> to <run>. this, <laughs> <make> <laughs> this, <laughs> this. This makes the conversations happen, isn't it? Well, and then yeah. making the conversations happen. <laughs> that's, that's how you move forward, isn't it? That's the thing, people like to watch things, so mm. we can educate people by a little short. <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. And that's why, like, as well, sorry to, like, that's why it was the, the length it was, you know, like, I've showed a few people, like, why is it not longer? You know, um, what happens next? You know, <laughs> and, that, and that's how the way we wanted to drop what I was trying to say to Scott, that's how we need to drop it, you know. Um, we want you to decide what happens next. What do you think? Yeah, exactly, next? you know what I mean? Like, it's a circle, the dominant effect, you know what I mean? We started with Sydney's eyes, we ended with Scott size to think about, let you lot think about like, what, what are they thinking, what now? This is the third time I've seen it and actually I would encourage you guys to watch it again because you do pick up on real subtle things and it is a testament to script mm -hmm. mm. and then the three of you collaborating on making sure that those subtleties are in there but if you watch it again there's some crazy stuff in there that's just like Everything's in there for a reason. There ain't no like gap fillers and, and like that. Like, every detail's in there for re every angle. Like, and it's good like when you picked up on like their experience being in the theatre and that. Like, you know, like one take. You know what I mean, if you flip, you gotta bring yourself back up. There's time. There's some certain shots in there where I said, now we gotta hold this shot. Whatever happens, happens because this is the real what's coming up from her heart. Like when on that last bit with Zippy when she's looking down at uh, Scott. Do you know what I mean? That was one take. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's literally one take. And I thought, you know, after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and it was a cross shot, you know? So that's why I rate Jelani as well, because he managed to, to get what he really needed, you know? He followed the action, but no one to stop. So we, we just let them perform in the show. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's good. That's the actors a chance to do their thing. Hundred percent. And, and that's what that's a real drama. Yeah. Yeah, so, <coughs> yeah, no. yeah it's just, like they're brilliant, really. And um, I mean I'm I'm <coughs> hoping that it's gonna be on a big screen again soon. Um, but bearing that in mind, I think um, let's have a look at the time. I think it's really, we're we're good into wrapping up. <laughs> so um I think on a positive note, basically, it'd just be really nice to sort of hear, um, that's it, unless you're doing like super top secret projects. Mm -hmm. But like, if you could share like, like what you're working on at the moment, or some future plans, or... <laughs> well, I did a radio play the other day, um, with Corinne, the writer there. Um, so radio play, um, it's called uh, Girls in a Row. That should be coming out. When's that coming out, Corinne? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a writer. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah that's it's Grove in the Road. So obviously Bristol, another Bristol thing trying to get out there as well. Um, yeah. 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 I'm ready. Yeah, put it in for you. I'm just trying to be like him, man. Like, you know, any opportunity you guys got? Shout out to you, man. Let me get the police on me, guys. I'm going in a dream, trying to make it in life. Support. Support the cause. For sure. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, I think we've got enough time for a couple of questions. So, anyone's got a question? Yes. Uh, question for Scott. Um, 
You said you're an actor. Most, most of the stuff I've seen you in, uh, sketches and stuff, has been like the comedic, um, like those funny things. So obviously this is your first time as writing. So what motivated you to do something more dramatic, um, you know, as opposed to you know, something? Yeah, of course, man. I think probably because it was a short and I wanted it to really hit someone. I wanted it to really, I wanted it to affect people. Obviously, you can affect people if it's comedy and things like that. But like you were saying as well, we've done, that's how I kind of linked up with Corral because we did a lot of kind of comedy skits um, years back now. And it's good to have a fresh change as well. I feel like it's good to have a change, make something different. Um, but definitely because it was a short, I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be, like I said, that tennis, that back and forth of like a proper issue, something that really hits someone. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's probably why. Yes, sir. I, and Scott as well, and the others as well. The, the theme was, for my, what everyone's saying up there, is that toxic relationship. When things about relationships and them being toxic, they are either, I think, developed by like circumstances or things that you take into the relationship from previous relationships. Um, what would you say are um, the best ways to get beyond the toxic relationship if you actually connect with the person you're with. relationships and everything like that if it's damaging your mental health yeah, exactly. if something's damaging your mental health so much mm -hmm. then you should leave the more time people stay in toxic relationships because they've been in relationships for years or something like that and they feel comfortable and they don't feel like they can live without that yeah. person yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like it, and it's like a drug in a way it's like a, you, they can't cut it off and that's why you see relationships it's like they're broken up oh no but we need to get they just come back together so I feel like if something's damaging your mental health that much and it will if it's toxic to that level, then yeah, I would just I would just Sir. Okay, um kinda of adding on to that question on the toxic thing. Scott. So the concept it's kinda of like no no correct thing right answer with this one, but did you really, did, did you have any, have any idea how both sexes you would affect on on this concept? Because, you know. How both it, sexes I would yeah, affect? Yeah, yeah, because it, if I was a young man now, watching that, I would, I would have laid you one time, quick time, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then hearing your, your side of it, it's one of yeah, okay, you get my head around that as well. But now as, as a father and an older man, I see both properly and I can see with, you know, mm. with more eyes and ears and, and patience and whatever to, to take all on board so I'm like wow yeah and and so my my thing is at the point of you having this idea maybe you couldn't have possibly have thought that you could have grabbed the attention of everybody in this room of all different ages you know with the concept of what you've come because you've done a good job brother yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. I think yeah that's what I wanted I wanted it to be a, a conversation between both sexes like that because obviously I'm a man you know I don't know you know I don't know obviously you know women but I don't know what they're thinking so what I was doing kind of when I was obviously writing the script I was speaking speaking to women I was speaking how does this you know how, how would this affect you what would you say with things like this um, because I wanted to make it realistic I wanted to be realistic and for, for it to be realistic obviously I'm a man in that situation I need to make sure that I'm not just thinking like a man I want to feel like Kevin Hart. Like my brother, I want to, you know what I mean? I want to. I need to be able to see both sides of it, really. Um, and that's where the character development came from, right. you know. So when he was sending me the scripts and stuff like that, and we were going back and forth with the draft, I'd ask him like, "All right, why have you put that down? Why is she doing that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How did it get to this far to the point she's doing that? Do you know what I mean? Like, does she feel comfortable? Is she, is she just as abusive as the guy?" Do you know what I mean? Like, is this the first time they've come across the situation before? 
who's in the wrong, who's right. Mm -hmm. Just because mm -hmm. he's physically bigger and stronger, mm -hmm. does that mean that she's weaker? Like maybe she's doing it in other ways. Because it's interesting, because that's yeah. what's explored in the, yeah. the first film. Yeah. 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 Real good book in it. These things and it's important it. as well to listen to Zibia as well. Yes, yeah, Zibia. Between the three of them, catch it good. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's important to listen to Zibia as well because obviously she's playing the character. I want to know what she thinks. You know, I want to know what she kind of. And that's why when I shouted Zibia, because I knew straight because I already knew Zibia before, so I know. What Zibia is, I just know Zibia, and I just know she would be perfect for the role. Yeah. And I know what she would bring to the table. <laughs> she would bring that energy. Because if you, listen, listen, if we got, like, it's a seven minute short, we're doing free rehearsals, we need to make sure we're there straight yeah. away. We need right. to make sure we're not holding back. You know, it's a, it's a hard topic, but we mm. need to make sure we're giving it our all. And I know Zibia would do that. And that's why he's come into it, and then she's just made the role her own. And then, yeah, I feel like when you got the, the words on the page, you kind of need to elevate it above that, and then Zibia just did that, so yeah, that it makes it easier. easier. I think that's why I wanted to kind of highlight how swiftly these guys went into action. So like, that was the thing that blew my mind at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> what do I think? Sorry, man. So, um, <laughs> so, Scott messaged me, and I read the script, and I literally, I thought, for someone that hasn't written, it was like, I've tried to write. I couldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> and I literally was like, whoa, like, okay, yeah, cool, I'm down. I like the whole, the whole idea of it. Like, I wouldn't ever go into a project if I didn't rate it, basically. And Scott basically presented it with me. We, we met up, did the rehearsal, and like, once, like, a script is completely different to when you do the first day rehearsals, because that's when you really see it coming alive. Like, even though when Scott sent me the, the um, script, I could already see the film, if that makes sense. So that's how good the script was. The fact that I could see how good the film was gonna be through the script, and then as soon as we did the first day rehearsals, it was like in me, like I could feel it. I was connected to it already, so I was just like, I was fully involved. And from then, I just had to do my research on my part, because I'm not, I'm not that character. So, <laughs> and just basically get straight in with it. and. It was, it was intense because we did just jump into it like that. Like the first rehearsal was like, what, what happened? The first rehearsal was like, Scott picked me up. Like we were like making noise in the room. Like it was crazy. And it was like, that, yeah, that was like, <laughs> but like we went straight into it. And this was like in the first like 45 minutes. And it was like, all right, cool. This is going to be good because it's intense already. Like, it's super intense already. So like. It was good. I was I was just up for it from that from the first meet up as well. It was literally like I feel like this is gonna be good. And then when we first saw it, I couldn't believe I'm very critical of my own work and I couldn't believe what we had all created. Like I literally didn't know it was gonna be as good as I as good as it was. I'm not being biased, but <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm I'm very um I'm very grateful to be part of the project, to be honest, and thanks Scott for messaging me. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I think that is really, I think we have one more question and then that's, that's it. Uh, Let's do things super quickly. Um, were there any challenges that arose when you were writing or filming the, the short, short control? Yeah, other than time with filming, um, you know, there was a few, we a few things in terms of like lighting, because it was such a confined space, we tried to not get the light panels in shot, um, as well as that, it, trying our best to, to work around at such a small space, so like certain times Patch would have to be sit, standing on a sofa to try and get the boom move on. Um, and they're like a mirror in the corner there, as well. There's a big mirror. Yeah, the apartment was small. Yeah, it's very, very Probably small. small. <laughs> um, and what else? Um, you know, when you get really deep into it and you, you really think that you want to be Steven Spielberg and that, like, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I spent, like, I'm not going to lie, I spent, like, two hours trying to get this one little slider shot, you know. <laughs> Never when you're in the bathroom, do you even use it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, um, 
so yeah, that, that kind of thing in terms of like um, from from the crew perspective. Um, but I think time was was my factor because I feel like there was a lot more I kind of wanted to get done, a, um, a few more kind of shop changes and, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think it worked with what we, we got. Basically. Nice. Cool. To see more. I think final question. <coughs> Final question. Um, so yeah, really a question. I guess the answer is really amazing. Like, obviously, like with the name of the script, like being controlled, is it? Like, at the risk of maybe like stating the obvious, at certain points during the piece, I saw like the actual balance of power like shifting back and forth. And like, obviously, Carl made a really good point about just because he's bigger than she is doesn't necessarily mean that she's the vulnerable one. Because like, at multiple points during the film they were both kind of like affecting the uh, environment they were in like a person is always doing that like especially in a relationship like you made a um, uh, your, I don't know if your characters have my names but you made a specific decision to say like I'm seeing someone else just like you made a specific decision to mention like oh like I never knew my dad even though your girlfriend would already know that about you so it's kind of like, not maybe like gaining sympathy, but definitely trying to like take uh, control of like that narrative, that kind of stuff, like saying that and planting that seed, just like it's the decision to say, oh, I'm sorry, I've seen someone else. And even like little things as well, like when you first came into the room and you weren't looking up from like your game and stuff. It's kind of like being, <laughs> being a bit like manipulating, being a bit kind of standoffish. I just, yeah, I, I saw the whole relationship um, yeah, really, it's like a, like a back and forth as opposed to like a dominant sort of like one person is the aggressor and one person is not the aggressor. And I'm guessing like you know, that, that was maybe what you were intent intending. So I guess that was. Yeah, no, that's literally, that, that is it. That's yeah. perfect. That's the perfect answer. Yeah. 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 Yeah.